Let's talk about Chain AI as a microservice because that is how they are deployed. That is how we use Chain AI. Let's first quickly talk about what is a microservice. So the idea of a microservice is you have a client and you have an API, an application programming interface, and then that API in the background has a function, a piece of code that it actually starts. Right? And what the client does is the client here writes a query and that query then asks the API, okay, please give me this result. And then it returns the result to the client. So the idea with this is the client actually has, or the API has a few methods that the client can ask or that the client can um, query. Usually that's get, that's put, that's post. And for instance, that's delete. And that is how you communicate with the API. Now, why is this such a good tool? It's such a good tool because you have the client and the API. The client asks the API and gets information from the API back. But here in the background, this is actually not known to the client. So the client has no idea because this all is hidden. Now, the good thing is because this is hidden, you can build here whatever you want. The client has no interest in this. The client only knows how to talk to the API and then get the data. And the good thing is with the API that it's uh, stateless usually. So if you run the get, you could get the results back. That's it. If you run a put, put the data in the database and get the information back that it's been stored, done. So it's stateless. The good thing with an API is also you have a documentation so that you know, okay, what are the features of the API? How do I call these features? What will they deliver me as a result? And how does the data actually need to be formatted when I send the request? Then of course, uh, we also have security here, right? This is the API layer. This is the layer to make sure that nobody is doing shady stuff here with your actual function that is laying here in the background. So it's a, it's a layer for security. Then how does this actually work with ChatGPT, for instance? Now, how this works is on the left here, when we ask ChatGPT something, what we do is we actually go to the web UI, right? log in with our computers. And in the background, there is a model. Let's say this is GPT, GPT, 3.1, right? Of course, there is no 3.1, but what I meant to say is this is a version of GPT-3. Right? And so the UI is going to ask the model, here's the query, get the results back, and then sends the results to the client. Right? Now, how does this work with an API? With an API, we have a client here, and that is basically a, so a piece of software our code and that code asks the API here we want some data API asks the model gets the results back gets the results back seems pretty straightforward right now the thing is this is not how this works what they're doing in the background this here this doesn't exist usually you don't need this because why not just have the UI ask the API and then get the results back. Right? So you use the same structure, the same, um, the same infrastructure that you use for the clients as a microservice, the same way for your own applications, for your own UI, for instance. So this is how this works. And keep this in mind. Once you have the API, you can do basically anything with it. So I hope you learned something. And next we're going to talk about API gateways because this API part here, this is only half the story.